Hi, my name is Lee Knox. I'm the Laramie Wildlife Biologist, and this presentation will be covering the proposed 2023 hunting seasons. We're presenting in order of species, starting with pronghorn, then elk and bighorn sheep. There are no proposed changes to sheep mountain mule deer, which is why mule deer is not on this list. Uh, we are only covering species and hunt areas that have proposed changes in 2023. So in the pheasant season setting process, there's multiple steps, starting with the data collection, which goes clear back into August when we start collecting pre-season classification for pronghorn into fall season where we have hunter checks, check stations, um, disease and data collection, and to an, into our aerial surveys starting in late November and going clear into January and February. We have a regional review where we discuss internally between biologists and wardens uh, and reviewing this data we've collected. We sometimes can have a public scoping process after that involving landowners and the public uh, or in, for this year, we did a survey for Hunt Area 7. These go through an de internal department re review with our Wildlife Administration and then are proposed at the public meetings, which is now. We will then review the public comments, take them into consideration, and adjust proposals if necessary. The proposals are finalized by the Wyoming Game and Fish Commission. That meeting will be April 17th and 18th in Casper. So we'll start with Centennial Pronghorn. Centennial Pronghorn includes hunt areas 37, 44, and 45. The population objective is 14,000 pronghorn. A recreation management strategy is between 30 and 59 bucks per 100 does. The 2022 postseason population estimate was 12,700 and within the 20% of our population objective. Uh, fawn ratios improved this year uh, and were 63 per 100 does above the five-year average. And our buck ratios are just below our five-year average at 38 per 100 does and in the middle of recreation and our recreational management strategy. Proposed changes, uh, starting with hunt area 37, is increasing the type ones by 100. Hunter success has been very high the last five years in hunt area 37, uh, even in the low 90s. So we propose an increase there to provide more opportunity. Hunt area 44 has really been struggling in the in the, this herd unit. We've had very low hunter success. We made pretty drastic license reductions in for the 2022 season, uh, but it appears more is needed. So to address low hunter success, uh, we will reduce by another 25 licenses and remove the type six licenses completely to address uh, low population. Hunt area 45 uh, did very well last year. Hunter success was 90%. So we'll add an additional 50 licenses to increase opportunity. Cooper pronghorn. Cooper pronghorn includes hunt area 43. The current postseason population objective is 3,000 pronghorn. It is managed under recreational management strategy for 30 to 59 bucks per 100 does. The 2022 postseason estimate is 4,000 pronghorn. Uh, we will be flying a end of bio year line transect this spring to help come up with a more accurate population estimate. We are also proposing to increase this population objective from 3,000 to 5,000 pronghorn. That would better align with <laughs> landowner uh, 
concerns and hunter concerns over the current population numbers, which is, as you can see on the graph, incredibly low uh, from if you look back to the late 2000s, where it was closer to seven to 8,000 pronghorn and then started to steeply decline after the hard winters of 18 and 19, and then followed by severe droughts in 19, 20, 21, and 22. The fawn ratio for this herd is 55 fawns per hunter does in 2022. The five-year average is 80, uh, though we're not seeing in the past those higher fawn ratios, the recruitment make it into the population. This herd typically has very high fawn ratios. If we do get rain, it can grow very rapidly. Uh, so we will, I guess, keep waiting on that. Buck ratios are starting to decline due to the poor fawn recruitment. Um, we're seeing that in the lack of yearling bucks on the landscape. And the buck ratio in 2022 is 27 per 100 does, which is below the five-year average of 32 to 100 does and falling below the minimum for recreational management strategy. For 2023, we propose reducing type one licenses by 100. We made reductions in 2020 for the 2022 season uh, and we still need to make more so we're proposing another hundred this year uh, we reduced last year the type six licenses by several hundred to 25 and for the 2023 season we propose just removing those from the regulation until this population rebounds medicine bow pronghorn. So the medicine bow pronghorn is quite, herd is quite large. It includes hunt areas 30, 31, 32, 42, 46, 47, and 48. The population objective is 40,000 pronghorn and it is under recreational management strategy. Our 2022 postseason population estimate was 39,000 pronghorn, which puts us within 20% of our population objective. However, that gr population growth is still not equal amongst the landscape. We are still seeing uh, reduced population levels in hunt areas 30, 31, Portions of 42, though it seems to be recovering, uh, Southern 47, Southern 48, and all of 46. Uh, those have yet to fully recover from the hard winters of 18 and 19, and then followed by several years of severe drought, whereas we have seen better rain, summer rain, in the northern portions of 48, 47, and 32. And that is where the majority of the population is doing incredibly well. Our post or fawn ratios in 2022 are 67 per 100 does and are right at the five year average. Buck ratios increased to 50, which is above the five year average and getting on the upper end of recreational management strategy. Overall, this population does seem to be recovering. Uh, we have had a pretty good winter in Shirley Basin and in Bates Hole in portions of 32. Uh, we still have callers on the landscape. We started to see quite a few winter mortalities happening um, in February, though they seem to have slowed down. Um, depending how the rest of the spring goes, we should be not, we should not see any significant population level declines. And with the added moisture on the landscape, uh, hopefully we see good things this spring. 
So proposed for 2023 is to increase hunt areas 32 type ones by 200 and to it just to increase opportunity. Populations have been incredibly um, high. Uh, hunter success has been high and also increase the type sixes by 100 just to start addressing those higher numbers of pronghorn on the landscape so we don't have any negative effects to the habitat and decreasing the type sevens by 50 it's a it's a damage tag and there's just less concerns at this moment and the only other major change is just removing the type six licenses from hunter area 46. Uh, hunter area, the the hunter is along the interstate like we discussed in Cooper Lake in 43 and this in 46 have just been doing incredibly poorly. They've been in very severe drought conditions for multiple years at this point, And we're just not seeing population recovery in 46 at this, at this moment. Snowy range elk. Snowy range elk includes hunt areas 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 110, and 125. The population objective is 6,000 elk with the recreational management strategy. The 2022 postseason population estimate is just shy of 10,000 elk. And our calf ratio is 41 calves per hundred, which is exceptionally well for elk uh, and is right there with the five year average of 40. Bull ratios were high, uh, 32 per hundred bulls. The five year average is 27. Bull ratios are doing pretty really well in the snowies. Uh, that number should be taken with the grain of salt and probably considered more with the five-year average book because when we fly and count elk uh, if it's really cold and snowy we count a lot of bulls uh, if it's a, if it's 30 40 degrees and sunny we don't count a lot of bulls because they're up in the trees so it's very weather dependent without a uh, very intensive survey So proposed changes for 2023 are increasing Hunt Area 8 Type 7 licenses to address elk damage on private lands. Uh, we are also modifying the Area 9 Type 6 to increase hunter success and address elk damage on private lands by allowing 9 Type 6s to also hunt in Area 8. Um, Area 8 gets a lot of wintering elk from Colorado that also go back and forth across hunt area boundaries. Uh, and even though there is plenty of elk in hunt area nine and the nine type sixes have become popular to purchase in the draw, hunter success has always remained low and uh, a lot of those licenses go unused or unfilled. So this is a way to increase the area and HMAs and opportunity where these licenses could be utilized. We're also proposing to increase the area 10 type six from 100 to 300 to address over objective elk. Area 11, uh, it looks like it has a lot of changes. It's, it's, it's really more wordsmithing um, and trying to take away some of the sideboards of the cow tags so that they to increase hunter success. So on the 11 type fours, we will be decreasing those from 300 to 100 and allowing those area wide from October 1st to January 31st. And we will be moving the 200 licenses cut from the fours to the sixes 
uh, hunt the sixes have a higher success on that license type and so we're going to provide the opportunity there uh, the hunter is six will initially be valid from August 15th to September 30th and will go from 250 licenses to 450 licenses. And then the addition of allowing these sixes to be valid from October 1st to January 31st area-wide. The wordsmithing um, is just removing the Wyoming Game and Fish Commission habitat area will be closed. It's just unnecessary regulation wording at this point because the WIC is officially closed from human presence. So it's not, it already says it on the signs, the gates will be shut. So it's not something we need to remove or need to say within the regulations. The WIC uh, closure dates will still remain the same and it will be closed to human presence. So the only major change in, in all this is the 11 type sixes will not be able to hunt cow elk with rifles um, north of the interstate on the WIC. They will have to wait till October 1st to hunt WIC property. Lastly, we have the Douglas Creek Bighorn Sheep. Douglas Creek is hunt area 18, it is a limited opportunity objective uh, with secondary management objectives of five year running average of greater than 75% hunter success. Uh, We're currently at 100%, five year running average age between six and eight. Uh, our five year average is eight years of age and document of adult rams in the population and we observed at least 12 mature rams in 2022. The big changes proposed for 2023 are the separation of hunt areas in 2018 and 21. Uh, they have historically been run together uh, with a closed every other year, open every other year, uh, two licenses. And we're going to separate those because we believe the opportunity exists. Um, Hunt Area 18 will take three licenses this year, and they will be any re or any RAM uh, resident only. Uh, because of the 90-10 split, 18 and 21 uh, have to split five licenses to keep everything in order so the non-resident will go to 21 this year. So for the final season, uh, Hunter 18, August 15th to August 31st archery, and September 1 to November 30th, uh, three licenses, any RAM. And finally, if you have any uh, comments of support, of concern or just general questions about any of the proposed 2023 seasons. Uh, those need to be submitted by March 29th at 5 p.m. All comments are shared with the commission. There is an online form at the Wyoming Game and Fish website under regulations. They can be written in to the Wyoming Game and Fish at the address shown on the slide. Uh, and there will be paper forms available at the public season setting meetings that will be happening uh, this week. So these are all the hunt areas that I'm in my district that I manage or co-manage with uh, other biologists. Some of these will be covered on other biologists presentations um, and some there is no proposed changes so they were not in here but if you have any questions over something we didn't cover or any of the stuff we did cover um, you can call me by phone or contact me by email
Thank you.